Good morning and welcome everyone. Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Thursday, March 5th, 2020. Uh, I'll tell you, market a little rough once again uh, this morning. A uh, really good day in the market yesterday, and we'll talk about that, but uh, we've got some problems in the market that I'm seeing. Even with that move yesterday, I'm a little concerned about uh, a couple of things that we're going to talk about in just a bit. Uh, but we'll go through the uh, daily market recap. Uh, in talking technically, I do want to talk a little bit about Fibonacci retracement levels. I think we have uh, reached a key area if you're a Fibonacci fan. Uh, I think you'll find it pretty interesting where we are sitting on the S&P 500 or where we were at the close yesterday. Uh, also, uh, some relative strength issues. A um, lot of folks moving into different areas of safety. So those are not exactly things you want to see when the market's moving higher. And so we'll get into all of that. Uh, earning spotlight, a number of companies moving up and down in rather large fashion this morning. Uh, we'll talk about some of those companies, go through some upgrades and downgrades, and then we will wrap up the show as we always do with the three you must see. Those are three charts uh, that I find very interesting, and uh, you may as well as you prepare for the trading day today. All right, let's move into what happened yesterday before I start talking about uh, some of the concerns I have. Uh, first, when you look at the Dow Jones, uh, you can see up 1,173 points yesterday. I think that was two out of three days now where we've seen over a 1,000-point gain. Unfortunately, in between, we had about a, I don't remember, 700-point loss, 800-point loss. And today, uh, it looks as though we are going to have a rough start. Uh, futures right now pointing to, I don't know, maybe 600 point loss, something like that on the Dow. Uh, so it's going to open rough. We'll see what happens after that. But uh, this up, down, high volatility action, I personally just like viewing it from the sidelines. I don't like uh, trying to guess which way things are going to go the next morning at the open. I do think that as we have bounced, that there's probably a, a higher probability uh, that the market reverses back to the downside. Uh, just based on history, most of the time we get these big high volume or high, well high volume, but also high volatility uh, moves to the downside after a bounce. Normally, you'll go back and at least retest those lows. Uh, doesn't happen every time. Sometimes we have V bottoms, but usually we go back down. And this is an area I'd be really cautious about. But you can see the Dow, 1,100, almost 1,200 points higher. The S and P up more than four percent, 126 points higher. The NASDAQ over 300 points higher, up near 4%. And again, lagging just a bit, mid caps and small caps, they're up. Uh, but you can see the other major indices getting closer to the 20-day moving average than the mid caps and the small caps. You can see there's still quite a gap. So even when it's recovering, it got hit harder to the downside. And during this recovery, they're still not bouncing as much. So the, the relative strength of small caps and mid caps continue to be a big problem for the market. All right, looking at individual groups, the sectors, and this is where I have a problem. I mean, we have this huge day yesterday, over 1,100 points on the Dow. Uh, where are the aggressive groups? We've got healthcare, utility, staples, technology did make it onto the top five, and then materials. Where's consumer discretionary? Where's commercial uh, uh, communication services? How about financials, industrials, nowhere to be found? They all went up, but they're not leading to the upside. So you got to be a little cautious when you see more defensive groups leading. So yes, the market's moving up, but it's because folks are moving more into defensive areas, something that's been a theme here of late and something I'll be talking about a little bit more uh, throughout today's show. Moving on to the 10-year Treasury yield, we did have a uh, economic report out this morning in terms of actually two of them. Uh, in, initial jobless claims came out just a little bit higher than expected, 216,000 versus 215,000. Uh, quarter four productivity, a bit below expectations, 1.2% versus 1.4%. A little bit later this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, we'll have January factory orders out. We are expecting a drop of one tenth of one percent there. One tenth of one percent. Not doesn't seem like much, but right now with the way things are in the market, uh, it's just something else that you know may weigh on traders today. And factory orders can be extremely volatile, uh, so we'll see how they come in today. 
All right. Uh, looking at the 10-year treasury yield, let me make sure we got the latest here. Continuing to drop. You know, I'm talking about a flight to safety. This is a this is a poster child on flight to safety. When the yield's going down, it goes down because treasury prices are moving up. So everybody's getting into U.S. treasuries. And we've seen the treasury yield move down now almost unbelievably, but we have closed lower since February 19th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This will be the 11th straight day that the 10-year treasury yield has dropped, meaning that 11 straight days that money is rotating into treasuries. Two things. Number one, that means defense. Traders are looking for defense. That's not what we look for when the market's going to go higher. Uh, if traders really believed, if Wall Street was looking for the market to go higher on a sustainable basis, money would be rotating into aggressive areas. We're not seeing that. The second thing you need to be aware of, if you have a mortgage, the mortgage rates right now are at all-time lows. I really think uh, you should be looking at refinancing if you haven't already thought about it. 10-year treasury yield with this kind of a drop, um, you might be surprised if you haven't looked how low mortgage rates are right now. All right, uh, let's keep moving here. Let's uh, look at uh, get into talking technically. And what I want to do today is I want to just I want to start with the S and P 500. First, here's a weekly chart, and you know we've seen drops before. We saw 2015, 2016. Of course, the consolidation of the trade war, uh, the Fed kind of trying to figure out things. Uh, back in early 2018 into the end of 2018, we had some rough times. A couple of smaller moves to the downside. Some be, I mean, that's mostly blamed on the trade war. I blame it on the Fed. But uh, anyhow, we, we got through all of that. The Fed kind of got on board. We made this move. And now we have the coronavirus. And while for a while it was just contained over in Asia, uh, now it has spread. It certainly uh, appears to be a pandemic. And everyone is, you know, trying to scramble and figure out, okay, what's this going to mean economically? And, you know, beyond that, what's it going to mean to the stock market? Um, is the stock market, you know, did that initial push to the downside price this in? Or do we need more downside? Well, that's going to be something that's going to be debated over the next, you know, few weeks, few months, uh, maybe balance of the year. Who knows? I don't think anybody knows because no one knows exactly uh, how this uh, coronavirus is going to proceed over the next several months. So what I can tell you, though, is the stock market cannot stand uncertainty. Um, if the stock market can't figure something out, usually first step is sell. Um, now, we had the big move down. We bounced, as you can see, on the weekly chart. This was a huge weekly drop. But so far, it's been a huge weekly gain coming back. Um, I don't know which way we're going to go. I suspect we are going to struggle at that 20-week moving average if we get there. That's at 31.73, and I'll talk about that some more in just a minute. Moving to the daily chart, uh, here's that big drop to the downside, the hammer. Lots of volatility, but we have been moving higher. We closed at 31.30 yesterday. We got down as low as 28.50 and change. So we're talking about you know 280-point recovery here on the S&P 500. That is almost 10% recovery in three days. Well, four days if we count last Friday. So, you know, we've had a huge drop, but we've also had a huge recovery. So that leads, and, and check out where the 20-day moving average is. That's at 31.89. So the 20-week the, uh, was at 3173, right there. And the daily, the 20 uh, day is 3189. So we've got uh, Within about 15, 16 points, we've got uh, two key moving averages on both the weekly and daily charts. So we've got to consider the 3173, the 3189 area as resistance. And then that brings me to the Fibonacci. So this is a one-month chart. So this is where the selling really began back on February 19th, 20th. Here was the big drop. And so under the, you know, when you're looking at Fibonacci retracement, the key levels are 38.2, 50%. And 61.8%. So there have been a lot of studies done in the past. And typically, when you get these big drops, these are uh, retracement areas that are kind of typical when you've had a big shock like we've had over the past few weeks. Well, you can see that the we've already reached the second level at 50%. 
and this red shaded area takes us up potentially to 3187. That's the kind of the top. And I don't know if I have this exactly top to bottom, but it's pretty darn close. Well, remember that 3187, that kind of fits right in with the 3173 and 3189 on those moving averages. So this is going to be, we're pretty close to a really big level in the market right now with uh, 3187 looming on the Fibonacci scale. Uh, we have taken out the 3123 just barely. We're getting close to a double top. I think this is danger zone. Uh, doesn't mean we can't go higher. I mean, the market can do whatever it wants to do. I'm just talking about historically, when we look at Fibonacci, when we look at the VIX being as high as it is, and then coming back down, normally we get a retest, normally. Um, that would be all the way back down at 2850. And sometimes we break below. I mean, I'm not saying we can't go lower. I just think at this point, if you've been trading this on the long side, I would be very careful. Um, I'm simply just watching a lot of this from the sidelines. Occasionally, I'll dip a toe in here with one little trade, uh, but I'm, I have no interest in putting my account balance to work because I don't know, like yesterday, we, we rally, we look great into the close. You wake up this morning, the Dow future's down 600. Uh, you can't, it's hard for me to trade that. I, I don't even know what to say. It's just, it's too difficult going from day to day. And so I want to see things settle down first, or I want to see at least a test. I mean, if I was going to try to get aggressive on the long side, it wouldn't be after I've made a 50% recovery of the losses. It would probably be on a retest of the recent lows. Uh, so that's your, your uh, Fibonacci on the S&P. Now, technology is a big area of the market. So here's a daily chart on the XLK. So here was your move up. Here's the big drop. Here's your recovery. The recovery seems to be losing a little bit more steam. We didn't even get back up to where we were uh, on uh, Tuesday and uh, yesterday's close. So, and you can see the 20s cross below the 50, the 20s sitting at about 95, what's it, 95.19, the 50s at 95.74. We've got to get through that area. And when we pull this up on Fibonacci, the XLK, you can see high to low, and then the retracement again, we're right up about that 50% level. And we haven't quite gotten to the highs that we saw uh, back on Tuesday. So the high yesterday didn't quite reach Tuesday, even though the S&P did. So we've got some issues here, I think, uh, for the market. And I'm going to say that this is probably the biggest one right here. This is a relative strength chart. So I was looking at, and I always like to see as the market rebounds, where's the money going? You know, is the market really, truly aggressive? Um, because I think that sets up better for a possible V-shaped bottom than if the market is defensive. So when we first rallied off of the February 28th low, that was last Friday at the open, if you remember, we had that first push up, then we were down on uh, Tuesday, and then we rallied again yesterday. So there's your S&P. This is a 60-minute chart going back one month. Um, and I just got it on a line chart just to get rid of all the noise from the candlesticks. But here's the, the move back up, pull back. And then a move higher. This is the fun, This is um, the technology group relative to the S and P. So the S and P is going up. Technology is going up faster. That was good. So Friday and Monday things look good. Tuesday we pull back. XLK drops. No big deal. That's typical. But yesterday we get the big move up and we break out on a on an absolute basis on the uh, SPY, but on a relative basis technology does not. It it just kind of goes long flat, goes for the ride. Look at some of the other aggressive areas. Here's a consumer discretionary. So discretionary stocks have really been getting hit since February 28th on a relative basis. Even when we got to that level, this is where we've seen a lot of consumer discretionary stocks getting hit. During this move back to the upside, money is rotating out of consumer discretionary. Money is rotating out of communication services. Again, 28th was the low, or excuse me, 28th was the high on a relative basis. So we've been trending lower. Doesn't mean communication services stocks haven't been going higher. They have. This is a relative chart. So as the market's been going up, communication services is going up, but it's not going up as fast. It's lagging on a relative basis. Uh, industrials, you can see struggling, financial struggling. Those are your aggressive groups right there. Now look at the defensive groups. Here's utilities continuing to rise, even yesterday, continuing to rise. Um, real estate pulled back yesterday, but clearly in an uptrend. 
just set a new recent high. When we look back over the last month, just set a new relative high. Uh, consumer staples going straight up on a relative basis. Healthcare having a really good day at the end of the day on uh, uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, and then yesterday kind of going along for the ride. But do you see the difference? I've got defensive groups leading while the market's rebounding and aggressive groups lagging. And that makes me very nervous about the market. I don't like it when I see defensive groups leading in an uptrend. Defensive groups almost always lead when the market's going down. So when the spider was going down and the XLK on a relative basis was going down and some of the others were going, actually a couple of them actually held up pretty well. Uh, industrials going down, financials going down. That's typical when the market's selling off. But when it's coming back up, you want uh, traders to have an appetite for risk. You want folks to take risks. Otherwise, it's kind of like, well, yeah, I want to get into this move to the upside, but I'm just going to stick maybe a little toe in here. I'm not really comfortable. And the problem is if you're not comfortable and you're not confident and the market turns back down, you're going to get right back out of that position. So you want to watch relative strength. I think this is one of the most important parts of technical analysis, and I think a lot of traders don't use it. Uh, I think it's a big mistake. All right, let's keep moving on into earnings. So let's get into that earnings spotlight. A uh, number of companies reported again last night and this morning, and a lot of mixed reactions. Some good, not, not so good. Uh, others not so good. Let's pull up first uh, Zoom. Zoom Video Communications. Uh, stock had a great, uh, our company had a great report in terms of earnings per share last night, uh, 15 cents versus seven. So more than doubled the expectation. That's awesome. Uh, the stock is down 6.26% in pre-market action. But I, you have to say a lot of this was built in. And of course, the market is weak. So that combination is going to put a little bit of, you know, place some headwinds for the stock. Uh, but I think more than anything, it's just this huge move to the upside. $70 to a, almost 120 actually over 120 at the end of last week. That's pricing in some really good news. I think pullback, uh, any kind of a test, say the 20-day moving average, I think that would be an area I would be interested in Zoom. Uh, but let me also throw this in there. If I was trading stocks right now, given the VIX where it is and the volatility and the movement up, down, whatever, if I was going to trade a stock like Zoom, let's say we do get a big sell-off, it gets back down to the 20-day moving average. If I normally would buy 500 shares in this environment, I'd probably buy 200, maybe 150. Uh, I just don't take big risks, um, mostly because I want to manage my risk to the downside. I think uh, if you're going to be a successful trader, you want to be able to manage your risk to the downside. It's always, you know, a lot of times when you're getting into position, you're like, oh, I'm just going to make so much money on this. You don't think about uh, what you could lose. So I think it's really important when you're, trying to position size, how much room are you going to give it to the downside? We're in a really volatile market. Let's say it gets down to 102. Um, I would encourage you to be thinking about where you would get out if it doesn't hold the 20-day. So what's the level? Is it 100? Is it 97? Is it 92? Is it all the way down here at 77? Uh, it wouldn't be for me, but you know, to each his or her, her own. Um, I don't know. what I'm just saying if you're going to get in, to this stock or any stock, think about where you would get out. And that should help you position size. Because if I get into a position here at say 102, and I don't want to take a risk of more than say $300. If I say, okay, I'll give this stock down to 99. Well, that tells me right there from 102 to 99 is $3. I don't want to own more than 100 shares. Might be a light, lot less than what I normally would get, but that, I'm just saying, I, I think you have to look at this market and, um, appreciate the volatility that's out there, and then uh, have a plan to try to minimize losses. And it's not easy in this kind of an environment. All right, next up, uh, how about Guideware, GWRE, also reported last night, also beat easily, 21 cents versus 13 cents. Stock's down 13.66% pre-market. Uh, so that's going to take it down below this low, probably below this low, um, I think we're going to be looking somewhere down around 99, 98, based on that uh, percentage. Um, and that's after coming up with a pretty nice report and in the strong software group. Uh, so we'll see. But on a relative basis, you can see Guideware 
not one of the stronger stocks in the space. So even though they did come up with a nice report, uh, Wall Street, for whatever reason, has been shying away from the stock. And now we find out today, stock down almost 14% pre-market. Uh, BLDP. This is Ballard Power Systems. Uh, you can see, obviously, very, very strong uptrend on a relative basis. This has a, been a great performer within the renewable energy area. Uh, they did match expectations. They had a loss of four cents. That's what the market was looking for. Apparently, that wasn't good enough. Uh, Ballard is down over 8% pre-market today. So that's going to be about 80 cents, well, maybe a little bit more than that, which would probably take it down to about its 50-day moving average. We'll see. I, I just think this one's in a wide range. I mean, had a recent high at 14, a recent low at 840 or so. Um, I think that's your trading range in the near term. Uh, so this gap down still is in the middle of the range. It could go anywhere, in my opinion, after it opens. All right, how about another disappointment from last night? VNET, this is 21 Vianet Group. Huge move up, relative strength, very strong here. And they missed. These are the types of companies I don't like to continue owning because there was a lot of good news built into this stock. Wall Street was expecting a good number. Um, they lost two cents. The market was expecting a, a, a profit of six cents. So they came up eight cents short, stock down 6% in pre-market. Uh, this is one I would, I mean, maybe there's still like a lot of hope for the future um, and a lot of expectations, but I don't like stocks when they come up short of um, their estimates, especially ones that have been uh, leaders like this. So I'd be a little careful with uh, Vianet, 21 Vianet. All right, uh, I got to have some good news. How about Marvell last night? Marvell had some pretty good news. Uh, beat on the bottom line, 17 cents versus 16, stock up 7% in pre-market. Problem I have here is that it's been such a laggard. So I think maybe we get the pop, and I'm not sure we go a whole lot higher than that. 7% on this would be a buck 50 or so. Uh, so that's going to take us up close to $24. I don't know. Let's see if we can hold above the 20 on the close. That might be a problem here. We'll see. Uh, let's see. So companies coming out this morning, just uh, maybe one or two more. VIPS, V-I-P-S. This is in the Broadline retail space, and Broadline retailers have actually held up above their January low. This has been one of the better areas of the market, uh, Broadline retail, uh, throughout this whole coronavirus epidemic uh, scare um, and all the cautiousness and everything. You wouldn't think retailers uh, might uh, be among the leaders, but Broadline Retail has done fairly well. This has been a pretty good stock. It was at a 52-week high just about seven, eight weeks ago, uh, but they did come in with nice numbers, 41 cents on the bottom line versus 29. Stock is up almost 10% pre-market, so it is up over $14. I still think it's in the middle of this consolidation. I'd be surprised to see it break out with the kind of market we have but it is one of the leaders, so it's something I would keep on my watch list. Uh, let's go with one loser from earlier today. Uh, I know a lot of people like to trade plug, plug power, PLUG. Uh, stock's been in a nice uptrend. You can see relative to renewable energy, kind of like Ballard, uh, really strong action, uh, but the company did uh, just meet expectations with a loss of six cents. Stock's down five and a quarter percent pre-market. Still think you have a wide range that's in play here, up about $6 resistance, downside maybe about $375 or so. All right, moving on, upgrades, downgrades. Just got a couple of these for you. Uh, let's go with Amgen as an upgrade. I really like what's going on in the biotechs, and I've talked a lot about biotechs. Biotechs aren't far from breaking out. Think about how much we're down from the highs on the S&P 500. Biotech's getting ready to break out, so look at what is happening on a relative basis. We have broken out now to about an 11, 10 and a half month high, 10 and a half, 11 month high on, in relative strength, uh, biotechs versus the S&P 500. And if you, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to run out of time, but if you went back and looked at a, say a 10 day chart, 10 day, 10 minute chart, and look at biotechs versus the S&P 500, they've been rising every day. So a lot of money beginning to rotate into the biotechs um, I really think this is going to be an area that you want to consider for uh, 2020. Now, it, you know, if the market pulls back, we're likely to see a pullback in the group. 
um, but it, maybe it's maybe it's going to be less than what we're seeing in the overall market. But I would use weakness to maybe start building a position in biotechs. And if you want uh, ETFs, you can look into the IBB or the XBI. Only thing I would say is go check out the components because they are different in terms of what stocks they own uh, in those ETFs. But getting back to this upgrade on Amgen, uh, this is not one of my favorite stocks in the biotechs. It was, but the last couple of months, there's deterioration on a relative basis. I don't know what's going on, but it's not acting nearly as well as some of the others. So I don't know about this upgrade. I, I, I like the stock because it's in the biotech space, but I think there are many other stocks in that area that are much better. Next up, Dollar Tree, DLTR upgraded. Not sure why, uh, but it's being upgraded now. Specialty retailers did break below the January low. You can see Dollar Tree on a relative basis at a 52-week low versus a group that has started to strengthen. But I got to say, there are going to be better stocks out there than Dollar Tree. So I might upgrade a stock in uh, specialty retail, but it wouldn't be this one. I see a big breakdown here recently. If we get a move back up to 85, 86, I think that would actually be an area to sell. Um, so we'll have to kind of keep an eye there. Uh, downgrade, there's a biotech being downgraded this morning, ALXN, Alexian Pharmaceuticals. And on a relative basis, I can't blame the downgrade. I do like the group, as I mentioned, but this has been a very, very weak performer in the group. Um, you know, if it uh, breaks back down below 90, I mean, I wouldn't even be in it here at this level. Uh, I just think there, again, there are others that are better. All right, let's move on. Let's wrap the show up with the three you must see. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm trying to find stocks in this market. I mean, it's not like when I say I don't trade that I just don't do anything. I'm doing a lot of homework. I'm trying to study because when this is all behind us, we're going to have a new set of leaders. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. And I'll give you three examples of stocks that I think are beginning to show uh, some serious leadership. And if the market strengthens, I expect these are going to be companies that are going to do well. First one is eHealth, E-H-T-H. This is in the life insurance area. Now, life insurance is getting crushed, um, but this is, an inter this is an internet kind of play, I think, uh, on uh, life insurance. Um, E-H-T-H, you can see the volume. First of all, big volume here back in January. This was earnings gapped up, and then all of a sudden, see how everything was built in, huge move up. Went all the way back down to support the 50-day and now rallying back. It actually closed at an all-time high yesterday. It didn't break out above the candle from a couple of weeks ago, but it did close at an all-time high. So EHTH is one showing some nice relative strength. Uh, the next two are going to be healthcare stocks, and healthcare has been you know, performing much better of late. Cigna, I've talked about this stock before. I think I mentioned it to members at Earnings Beats a couple of weeks ago. Uh, even with the selling, I mean, the overall market took a, a beating, but even with the selling, the stock relative to the health uh, care providers group continues to be in this uptrend, and it's starting to turn up again, and it's doing so with a lot of volume. So it's cleared both of its moving averages, even though the S&P has not. And so that's setting us up for a group that's breaking out and a stock that's showing leadership. So this is a stock that I definitely want to keep on my radar. And then finally, in this same space, Humana. Uh, Humana, not far from breaking out on an absolute basis and already breaking out versus healthcare providers on a relative basis. You can see breaking out versus the S&P on a relative basis. And then the group, as I mentioned, healthcare providers breaking out to a new 52-week high versus the S&P. So while the action's been horrible, and yes, there's a lot of fear, panic, defensive posturing, all of that going on, there's still work to be done, even if you're not trading, even if you're sitting on the sidelines. I think there's a lot of work to be done. That's what I'm trying to do now. All right, uh, that is it for another day of Trading Places. I'll be back on Monday at Earnings Beats, and I'll be here Tuesday at 9 a.m. Everybody have a great Thursday. Happy trading. 